You're very welcome back. Now, about 50% of women and 20% of men will experience an osteoporotic fracture during their lifetime, be that breaking their hip, spine or wrist. But what is osteoporosis and how do you know if you have it? GP Dr Brian Higgins joins us this morning. Hey, good good morning, morning, Brian. Hi, Great Brian. to have you with us as always. Simple question. Good morning. What is it? So uh, osteoporosis is probably best thought of as a brittle bone disease. It's a metabolic condition that as time goes on, our bones get less and less dense. It's a natural aging process. But in some people, that process is a bit more aggressive and their bones get very, very frail. And then once the bones drop below a certain density, they can break very easily from just a simple fall. And that's what we call osteoporosis. OK. So why, in the intro there, we mentioned women are 50% mm. more likely. So why is that? So women in general um, have... It, it, when you ha look at men, their hormone balance, while it tips down over time, during the menopause, women's hormones drop a lot more rapidly. And oestrogen is a very important part of bone health. So during the menopause, when oestrogen falls off, it affects bone metabolism, making the bones um, that loss of density a little bit more rapid. Okay. Um, and then women in general, their bone density isn't quite as high as men's in younger life. So we're so more susceptible mm, to more it susceptible. anyway. Yeah. Okay. And women during menopause, should they be more careful? Should they expect their bone to be a little bit more brittle maybe? Um, I think what's really important about this is prevention. Um, I think to be more aware that this could happen to you mm -hmm. and make provisions to say, okay, let's do something to make sure that I'm keeping my bones as healthy as I can moving forward, as opposed to saying, oh, look, my bones are brittle. I'm going to be very, very careful. Say, look, my bones might get brittle, so let's do something about it to prevent it. Okay. So what are the things what you can do and like, how effective are they? How preventable is it? So when you look at any sort of medical condition, we all have risk factors for them. We have modifiable ones that you can change and unmodifiable. So the unmodifiable ones, the ones that you can't really do anything about, if you have a strong family history of osteoporosis, your mum and dad both had brittle bones, uh, you have certain diseases like hypothyroidism, celiac disease, any anti-inflammatory condition, any in, um, autoimmune condition like rheumatoid arthritis. Um, you can't really change those or female sex. You just have to know about that. You just have to be more, a little bit but more aware. But you could aware. be vulnerable, yeah. potentially. But there are modifiable risk factors such as smoking, uh, malnutrition, being very underweight, um, alcohol excess, and then just certain medications as well, just to be cognizant that that can affect your bone density, so say steroids, and even something people don't think about, um, medicines for heartburn, like PPIs, they can affect your bone density as well over a period of time. L prolonged usage of them. Yeah. Okay, that's certainly something to consider, isn't it? A sedentary lifestyle, so again, much like everything we talk to you about, Brian, it comes back to a healthy life, including exercise. Oh, exercises, I, I'm always going on about exercise with mm. my patients. It's so, so, so important. If you look at astronauts who are in zero gravity, their bone density drops really rapidly because they're not putting any pressure through their bones. And that's the same thing, part of it as well, if you're very underweight, you're not putting quite as much pressure through your bones, so you're not stimulating the bones to become denser. So that's why a regular exercise is just so important to keep to staying healthy from a oh, not only a bone point of view, but a heart point of view and a mental health point so, of view. So phys physically, if you do exercise a lot and, and even if you are advancing in years, all the exercise you do can, does make your bones stronger as well as, as, well as your muscles yeah, and your general absolutely. well-being. Absolutely. And then even in later life, just to keep that, uh, keeping up that activity. Mm -hmm. So say even if you think about patients in nursing homes or patients who are in hospital, even getting them up out of bed and getting them to do some weight bearing exercises, like even just walking, it, it does make a difference. Mm. Tell us about the, is the DEXA scan, is that how you pronounce it? The scan <coughs> that you can get to actually see, does that show your susceptibility to it or just whether you are suffering from it? Um, a little bit of both. So a, a DEXA scan is a very, very safe, very, very cheap way of trying to assess if you have osteoporosis or not. Uh, what it uses is a very low radiation X-ray to look at how thick your bones are. And it looks at your bones in a couple of different areas, like your hip, your lumbar spine, and your wrist. And then it works out what the density of those bones are. So it can tell you if you're normal, you have osteopenia, which sometimes causes a little bit, con bit of confusion because um, some people don't know, should I be on medication? What should I do? And then osteoporosis, where you're at a high risk of okay. uh, risk of fracture. And then we use some a little bit of math as well, just to figure out what your risks are. So you might have low bone disease, but if you have no family history, you're not a smoker, you don't fall, we don't have to worry. Whereas if you've had a couple of falls, we're a bit more apprehensive. Yeah, is the, is the danger that you may go along completely unsuspecting that you, you're vulnerable to this mm. and that you could have a fall and suddenly, you know, you've been suffering from it that you just didn't know? 
yeah. that there was a potential risk there. And that's the thing, it's a totally asymptomatic condition. Sometimes people can have a little bit of, so some, if your bones get brittle enough, what'll happen is your, your spinal column will just start to collapse. And that's when you see those old ladies and, and old men just start to Hunch curve over, yeah. over. And those people generally always have osteoporosis. So you know, if they fall, they're probably going to break a hip. Um, but for most people, yeah, we just, we just don't know. So, by get, so for certain people, um, going to get a DEXA scan um, will show you your bone density. And you can say, okay, I'm absolutely fine. Or look, I need to be a bit more careful here and change my diet, take a bit more calcium, a bit more exercise, vitamin D. Well, if that's it's what needed. I was going to ask you. Is there particular foods that we should be introducing into our diet if they're not already there? And maybe supplements as well? Um, it depends. So there's some, you can actually, there's a bunch of assessment tools online to see if you get enough calcium in your nice. diet. Um, a lot of people just say, oh, I'm just going to take calcium because I want my bones to be healthy. But if you get enough dairy, if you get enough milk um, in your, and yogurts in your diet, you probably don't need it. But then at the other side, we say, oh, I don't have cheese because it might put your cholesterol. Right. Cholesterol. Uh, so yeah. it, it, it can be hard. You're telling uh, me one thing, doctor, and then you're telling yeah. me another. Contradicting <laughs> yourself. And then with vitamin D, um, not a, a lot of people in Ireland are vitamin D deficient. So unlike today, we don't yeah. have the usually fabulous weather. Um, so a lot of us can be vitamin D deficient, but then not everybody needs vitamin D. So if you think there's a chance you could be vitamin D tell deficient, us, get, a, get a blood test. Tell us uh, finally, Brian, about some of the actual treatments. Uh, you can have biophosphonates, uh, denosumab, hormone replacement. Is, is that what we're talking here? Yeah, so uh, treatment-wise, what we say is exercise and getting enough vitamin D um, in your diet. Then there are bisphosphonates, which are a medic medicine that can change your bone metabolism. Some people, they can be hard to take, so some people go on to a six monthly injection uh, called denizumab, which is, can work really, really well. And then for a lot of people who are postmenopausal and they're starting to have low density, we'll use hormone replacement therapy to help boost up. There's actually really good, um, the Irish uh, Osteoporosis Society is a really good resource and it'll have a list of centres um, uh, where they do DEXA scanning. We, d we do them in our clinic. And there's a few other places mm. in the West, but and people, that, um, what age would you be recommended to have a, a DEXA scan? Um, it depends. If you have risk factors for osteoporosis, you need a DEXA scan. So if you have a lot of um, so people who have celiac disease, hypothyroidism, steroid use, they should all really have a DEXA yeah. scan. Okay. Generally, say women over the age of 55 or men over the age of 65 should consider having a DEXA. And there's a list uh, IrishOsteoporosis.e. And there's a list all of the, de all the details there. Ones. Brilliant Brian, advice brilliant as, stuff always, as always, Brian. Thanks a million now. Still to come, actress Hilda Fay talks about swapping Carrickstown for the theatre. The theatre, and we've summer styles on the catwalk and spicy crab fish cakes in the kitchen. Lovely. We're having a, a tipple when we taste the best rose wines. Don't think we need a tipple. You were looking this for morning. a tipple at five to nine this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven o'clock. <laughs>